my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are all of you today? Excellent! Well, it's been quite a while since I've seen you, even though you saw the mystery spot very recently. I haven't made a video in like a week and a half. When I came home from that whole trip, I got the flu, I was sick, and then we had a couple of rainy days, so we didn't go out, and Jot was kind of stuck to being back in the house again. But the weather is beautiful today, so we're going to go take Jot to the park, and then I want to go visit or see the, um, the crash site of Paul Walker. Um, he was a local Glendale raised actor who, uh, much like James Dean, died far be before his time at the age of 40 years old. So we're going to go out and talk about what happened there and his accomplishments up until that point and uh, just see that crash site. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Let me see if I have a chance at fishing out the creature from the Black Lagoon in here to go to the park. Anybody want to go to the park today? Uh-huh. A little bit of hangout time here. There's quite a few dogs out here today. So sadly, where we're going today, this crash site, this was actually, you know, literally like five minutes before this accident. This was kind of a, a more joyous occasion because this was a fundraiser that Paul's charity was throwing for um, raising money for the victims in the Philippines that had suffered a natural disaster. So literally before he left this party, this gathering, um, he told people, see you in a minute, gonna be back in five minutes, be right back, you know? And, uh, and then within, you know, just a few moments, they can see clouds of smoke. Showdown. And in one of those bizarre Hollywood stories, a guy who called himself an adrenaline junkie and even said in interviews that he thought, you know, racing cars was like, that was what American men did, you know, and was in the most popular franchise at the moment, Fast and the Furious. He was actually on break from filming the seventh movie. He was supposed to report back on Monday to Atlanta. So right now we're taking about a 40 minute drive north to Santa Clarita. All right, we have arrived in Santa Clarita. So it was right here along this street on a Saturday afternoon that Paul Walker was the passenger in his own car, a Porsche Carrera GT, and his good friend Roger Rodas was the driver. See, like I mentioned earlier, Paul's um, charitable foundation was throwing a car show and toy drive for the victims of the tsunami in the Philippines. And um, so this event was full of Paul's friends and they just decided to go off for a joy ride apparently and told their friends, hey, we'll be back in five minutes. And um, the sad ending was that um, not more than a few moments later, the car would crash. Now. Um, the police report, I believe, said it was going almost 100 miles an hour on this street, and I believe the speed limit through here is 45. Yeah, I'm seeing a sign right there, 45. So it was uh, one of those instances where they said that it was um, just speeding, but Paul Walker's daughter uh, filed a lawsuit afterward because this particular car had had um, a very limited run. It was about, I believe, around 2,000 of this particular car, and um, they had already reported 200 totalings, like totals of those cars. So Paul's car was one of those cars, and her lawsuit alleged that this car was built without a stabilizer that um, all the other cars were built with for whatever reason Porsche had not put that in here and other race car drivers had said that this was a car, hard car to handle. Now Paul was on a racing team so he was a professional racer as well as his driver uh, Roger Rodas. He was actually an award-winning champion race car driver. You can see here on this tree there's a message to Paul. You 
In fact, it's a little hard to read, but this tree is full of messages, full of carvings. None of them really can be read anymore, but it shows you how many people have come out to pay their respects. So it was precisely right around here that the car lost control and careened off, wiping out a telephone pole just like this. In fact, it snapped it in half and two other trees. Now, the sad um, reality that the coroners found was that um, both Roger and Paul died of traumatic injuries. Roger died of multiple traumatic injuries, but they said that Paul actually would have survived the initial crash with um, many injuries. They said that he was alive um, for 60 seconds after the crash. The car was smoking before it exploded or burst into flames. And they believe, his daughter believes, that Paul was basically burned to death because he was still alive um, for that time and was injured and couldn't get out of the seat belts. You could see this parking lot in the background of the footage. The car was so mangled that, I mean, it was, they couldn't even tell initially what kind of car it was. And Paul's friends uh, raced to the scene and they, they even had to restrain some from trying to pull him out of the wreckage. They were both um, pronounced dead on the scene, unfortunately. But they did find that Paul had ingested uh, soot, so that was also part of the claim against Portia. Even here you can see someone tried to scratch. Rest in peace, Paul. Now if you take a look at the road, you can see a lot of fans come out and pay tribute. I guess in Fast and Furious style, leaving tire marks and burnouts all over the place, but that's actually one of the things that they used to determine what happened that day was looking for um, any brake marks or any kind of uh, squealing or anything to get a, a clear picture initially. Now part of what gave credence to that curiosity of maybe it was the car and not the speed was that Paul's friends who um, were professionals in this business said that Paul had raced faster cars and um, he even himself boasted in interviews that he had just reached under 200 miles per hour and that his goal was someday to uh, drive a car that hit 200 miles per hour. But this particular Porsche that he had was, uh, like I said, extremely limited. I believe it was under 2,000 made and, um, and it cost him between $400,000. That's what that car went for. So after the crash, they looked for any kind of security footage or surveillance or anything they could find. And from this building over here, they found a shot. You couldn't see what happened, but you could see um, the smoke and you could see um, basically as the car went through here, you could see it wiping out trees just over this bush line in the footage. And it careened off and knocked out that light pole that would have been there. Now this was really sad also because Paul Walker was, you know, primarily known for those Fast and the Furious movies, but he had been an actor his whole life since he was a kid and um, had his life cut short at the age of 40 years old. But it was weird when I saw interviews with his family, his father said, I don't know, maybe it was just meant to be like this, like Paul loves speed, maybe it was just this was his time. Now I couldn't find the precise address to where this fundraiser was being held, but they said that literally they were only blocks away when they crashed and they would have been coming up this way. So they would have been coming from just a few blocks away right through here to where that bus is now stopped. And the reason this bus was stopped here is because the driver took a break and stopped and got out and paid his respects. You can tell here by looking at the pole that they often have to come out and repaint it, removing any messages that are left here. You can see right there. One of the tree stumps. Now I want to go out to Forest Lawn Cemetery, Hollywood, 
and pay our respects to his final resting place. The crash site was right there. It's too bad they couldn't get any security footage from the security camera up here. Seems like that would have, if that would have been there back in the day, that would have been a prime witness. So as we drive away, Paul's car would have been coming towards us. And I read online that this particular strip is known for a lot of people speeding and flying through here fast. So it's actually right across the street from the church here. Here's the Washington Memorial. It's actually up a few levels up here. Now I believe I saw online that this particular Porsche is the closest thing that Porsche made to a race car. It was the fastest thing, uh, or one of the fastest street legal cars there was at the time. Just came upon Al Jarreau's grave here. Then to get to Paul's grave, we go through here. That's really nice. Then we walk down here. So I believe Paul's right around the corner here. Yeah, right there. Now what's sad is that they said that this particular car was back heavy or tail heavy, so they said it was, um, it was easy to lose control and it was hard to get control back. Sad, something that was just supposed to be out there to help raise money for other people ended up turning into such a sad occasion. There you can see people have left the Fast and Furious cars. So the reason there are so many flowers out here is because the day I'm filming this is actually the anniversary of Paul Walker's passing. There's no uh, traditional headstone out here that says the birth and death dates, but it was November 30th. It's really great to see so many people coming out here and paying respects. Sadly, I believe that Paul Walker's daughter did end up filing a wrongful death suit against Portia, and I do believe that uh, Portia prevailed in that. That they stated that it was um, fast driving, reckless driving that caused that, not the mechanics of the car. All right, since we're not too far away, I want to lighten the mood a little bit and go over to Bob's Big Boy. Look, we found some food over there. Those deer. To the right up here is Warner Brothers. Yep, we haven't been here for a hot minute. Never was there a friendlier entrance. Oddly enough, I think I'm not going to have the burger. I think I'm going to have some spaghetti. Yeah, they got a little bit of everything. No, oh, it's very, very tempting. Alrighty, he talked me into change my mind. I got the uh, famous chili spaghetti instead of spaghetti marinara. So we'll try their famous, world famous spaghetti chili. Well, I guess today we try something new here at Big Boy. It is pretty good, but I wish I would have got something else. Well, hello there, buddy. Do you have any parting words before I wrap up the vlog?
Any parting words? All right, my friends, I hope you all enjoyed this vlog. We'll see you later. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for watching, and thank you my new Patreons, Glenn Tideman, Denise Fletcher, Kara Wisdom, Ray Powell, Deborah Ann Weiss, Amy Jane Redford, and Lisa Vaughn. Thank you all. We'll see you all later. Have a great night, and goodbye.